so for today we're gonna do some AI so let's create a folder <clears throat> called AI system so what we need is a few things first uh, open up the blueprint class we will need a character so let's call this one enemy BP looking handsome and then we will need a AI controller so you can search for search for AI controller um, right here by the way this works on Unreal Engine 4 as well so it's the same concept so you can open up the enemy and you can you can see there's nothing cool uh, you can open up uh, you can click on the mesh and select your character's mesh so we can so we're gonna do the basic one you can see we have the basic character and for the animations this one uh, AB many I, I don't know what the queen I don't know what I have no idea okay just click on the animations add an animation class one of these will probably work okay and that's basically it for now in the character so you can actually drag it out in the world and you can see we have our own character you can see we have a character it doesn't do anything because he's kind of brainless like a child so to make him move it's really simple we have to do artificial intelligence <laughs> let's go so we're gonna do a behavior tree so bt and the last one is the blackboard so uh let's do enemy so the tree uh basically is the all the logic all the all the tasks all the things he's gonna do and the blackboard is basically like a storage of variables i guess so let's go to enemy controller just open that up and let's go to event graph so that should be begin play right we can do a run behavior tree like that compile and add our bt enemy and compile so that's basically it for now if i compile save it i don't know how to save it just save and now back to our character we can go to self so search, search for the controller and there should be a ai controller right um use the the controller that we created the enemy controller compile so now what we actually did we are linking this tree to the enemy controller that is in the enemy bp so basically now if we actually do something or add a task he will do the task so we can open up the bt enemy and you can see now the complicated stuff is happening that you will never understand now this will be complicated um if you don't understand not my fault let's get into it first things first we need a selector so this will select our sequences or tasks or whatever and you can see there's there's an index it's zero so it's basically gonna go from the root to the selector first and then from the selector we're gonna do a sequence and you can see that number is one and if you add another sequence that will be two but the cool thing is that i kind of understand but kind of don't if you move it here you can see it becomes one so it's basically how it's basically how you read the book you read it from the left to the right okay now from the select uh, sequences we can actually add tasks so if you drag it out there should be like tasks, for example, play sound, move to, play animation, make noise, wait. And you can see there's move to, right? but we're not going to use it. We're going to use our own tasks. Right? So you, you can see there's a button called new task. Click on that. Click on that. Shit. And you can actually create a new folder called tasks. What I should recommend. Open that up and now name this BTT. And remember to name your tasks please if you don't you're gonna get in trouble man and we're gonna call it move uh, to random location 
so we're gonna do that first open it is gonna open basically so there's function so, so override there should be receive execute a yarn just click on that and add another one finish execute and check that succeed so you need these two nodes to actually do something so this is the last node basically if you don't have it it's not gonna work okay so we're gonna do uh ai there should be like something with ai ai moved to right here and just plug and just plug that on on succeed it's gonna finish execute we're gonna get from the control pawn actor uh, location and get random reachable point in the radius and plug that in and the radius will be like uh, 1500 for example acceptable was the 100 I don't know just guessing so I just made a made a little mistake on the AI move to okay so from from the execute just get AI move to and then plug in the pawn and then on succeed I don't know if it affects something but I'm I'm just just in case gonna do it like that so this is how it should look like um, just copy it and hopefully you understand if not <sighs> So back into the behavior tree from the sequence from the first one we're gonna have a task and you will see our move to random location task click on that and you can see it basically adds like a task we're gonna do uh, one thing called uh, wait so go to task and there should be wait so it's gonna wait like mm, two seconds and then it's gonna do this again you can delete uh, the second one and you can see there's numbers for example one then two then three so it's gonna do this one first and then wait so now um, the character will not move or the AI will not move because we need a thing called nav mesh bound value so just drag that in and if you press P uh, you will see like a border I guess uh, where the enemy can move so we're gonna make it a little bigger like let's do like 50 by 50 by 50 so it's like the whole map basically so now if we actually play you, oh you can see it moves to a random location except the animations are kind of bugged out so i, I have to fix it real quick Okay, so uh, I created uh, animations, so separate animations, blueprint and uh, blend space. Um, so now, if you actually play, you can see it actually walks and it stops. Literally ignoring you because uh, he cannot actually see, right? You want him to see you, right? So he can actually follow you and do something, right? If you open this up, you can see... This is the moon. Um, you can actually rename the sequence to uh, move to. You can understand it. And from the selector, we're gonna do another sequence. That's right. And we're gonna do uh, move to or uh, let's do follow player. Or uh, technically, it's gonna follow you. So it's basically the same concept as move to a random location, except we're gonna locate the player so we're gonna do another task and now you can see we have a drop down we can do the blueprint base now again you have to rename it it's uh, really important to name things because uh, you will get lost so we're gonna do chase player so now it's the same override receive execute ai finish execute check that box off you can just connect it and stuff so this is actually one of the easiest ones so from the so we're gonna do again AI move to cannot type move to connect the pawn with the controller and the target one 
is get player character and acceptance will be like yeah let's do like 50 okay and this should they should be uh, on success not that so, so you can compile bam we have to add some eyes to the player or to the enemy I mean. not the player we yeah. have so we're gonna go to the blackboard right and we're gonna add the key uh, the first one boo so it's true or false can see question mark so you can save that go back to the behavior tree uh, and you can see we have another we have a variable called can see we have to right click the move to that should be at the decorator it's basically what it says we are decorating this move too so we're gonna add a blackboard and you can see now it's like bigger <laughs> box and so click on the blackboard and there should be uh, some details and there's a blackboard key so click on the cell factor and change it to cancel and the key is is not so if he's if this is false uh, this variable if that's false then it's gonna do this one but if it's true it's gonna do this one so we're gonna add a decorator blackboard and it's the same thing except he's set so it's only gonna do when the variable is true we actually have to make it so it switches to true or false so to do it we can actually save it go to our enemy hello little guy and we're gonna add a component called pawn sensing and you can see now we have like some weird ass lines i don't know what the hell all these so on c pawn right here just click on that so what we're gonna do is cast to third person get ai controller then from the ai controller uh, get blackboard get blackboard right here so set value as bool and just connect these things and now but uh, this will be true you can see the bool value is true and now we need a key name so it should be a literal name i think and you can see now we need the name so the name is can't see right here so in the blackboard click on it and just copy the name and go back and paste it should be self uh so get self so we are casting to third person character so whenever he sees us or the character that we are using we will set the boolean of the blackboard to true so that means he will basically chase us now let's go back to our behavior tree and we have to change some things so so click on the blackboard and there should be observes bots do self so as uh, the other one so so and save it and now if we actually play you can see it's gonna chase our player uh, I'm not really fast he's faster I'm scared but he's not he doesn't see me so he's just gonna go to a random location now I think he saw me yes he did um, if you want to make the range a little smaller you can go to pawn sensing at the sight radius for example 700 and you can see and so so as the angle you can do like 70 uh, maybe 80 so he's kind of blind and stuff and now if we play it's gonna be a little harder him to see so he has a really bad sight so as me you can see he didn't see me he's blind holy cap <laughs> you can see he just runs to a random location and now he can see me stops you can see now he's gonna run so that's basically it for today's uh, it, it was quite long but i mean it's fine it's fine